Hey everyone, today I'm looking at an alternative landing technique that you can use to switch things up a bit from the normal traffic pattern. I've heard it called either a corkscrew landing or a spiral landing, but at the end of the day, regardless of what you call it, it's the same technique. This approach to landing isn't used all that often, but it can be used in special circumstances, like it's used at Baghdad International in Iraq. There was an incident a few years ago where a DHL plane was hit by a rocket on landing and since then it seems like it's become the standard way to land at that airport. You might also want to use this technique if you want to stay close to the runway threshold, maybe due to an emergency, like if you lost an engine or if you've had some other type of failure. You could also use it if you need to get down quickly from a high altitude. Even if you're performing this maneuver in a Cessna 152, you can still get a pretty fast spiraling descent rate that won't cause undue stress on the airplane. As you're going to see, the first few times you try this maneuver, it's best to use a longer runway so that you have a little bit more leeway in case you screw something up. My first few attempts weren't horrible, but they weren't very pretty either, so having that extra runway length is definitely useful. Before I look at the exact details of the technique, I just want to remind you if you get any value out of this video, please make sure to hit like and subscribe. And if you have any comments, put them in the comments below and I'll make sure to get back to you. With that out of the way, let's get straight to the demonstration of how to do the spiral landing. All right, I am at around 6,000 feet right now and I'm on approach to Baghdad International. I don't know how accurate the satellite imagery is in this area of the world. But for the purposes of my demo, it doesn't really matter. In the real world, they would start this spiral landing from around 18,000 feet and follow it all the way down to the ground. In my case, what I'm going to be doing is I'll, I'll start from 6,000 feet instead, just to give you a, an abbreviated version of it. But the procedure is the same whether you're starting from 6,000 or 18,000 feet. Now you won't be able to request a spiral landing from the game's ATC, but you can still request a landing and it'll probably give you a visual landing and you can just ignore the traffic pattern entry that they suggest and just fly the spiral all the way down to the runway. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is get your airplane in a configuration that's going to be easy to handle. So what I like to do is configure the airplane for approach and that means getting an airspeed of around 110 knots and lowering that first level of flaps. The first level of flaps really make it a lot more stable as you are turning and I really prefer it to using the cruise configuration which would mean the flaps would be up. After that the next thing you do is you need to choose a spot on the ground where you're going to turn. I like using the runway threshold. It makes it really easy when I'm going to start coming out of the turn to line myself up for landing. So now that I'm over my spot, what I'm doing is I'm starting my turn. And as you can see, I'm using around 30 or so degrees of bank, just a little bit steeper than that to get started. What I'm really doing here is I'm doing a ground reference maneuver that's called turns on a point. So what I'm trying to do is keep that runway threshold in the exact same spot. And you can just see it right over there, just underneath the left engine of the airplane at the moment. What you need to do when you're doing a turn on a spot is you need to keep an eye on the wind. In my situation, the wind isn't a huge factor, but it is still going to blow me slightly off course. If the wind's at your back, you're going to have to use a steeper a bank angle to be able to keep that point in the same spot. When the wind's coming straight at you, in those situations you'll have to use less of a bank angle. That's because your true airspeed on the ground is going to be different based on how the wind is blowing at that point. So I try and keep my bank anywhere between 30 and 60 degrees pretty much the whole time that I'm going to be turning around this point. And as I see that I'm either coming up too shallow or I'm getting too far away, I'll either decrease or increase my bank angle depending on what I need to do to adjust. Like right now, you can see I'm almost at 45 degrees. The other thing you've probably seen from my aerobatics videos is that when you're doing a turn at a high bank angle, you're often going to be pulling a lot of G's. 
In this case, I'm not pulling any Gs at all. I'm really in a very smooth 45 degree turn. I'm not pulling back on the elevator whatsoever. The other thing you've probably noticed as well is I'm descending at around 1,000 feet per minute. I generally use this configuration instead of the usual 500 to 700 feet because it's going to be a little bit faster to get down than it would otherwise. Effectively doing it at 1,000 feet per minute is going to be two times as fast as 500 feet per minute. It's obviously a little bit more aggressive, but even in a plane like the Cessna 152, you can have a 1,000 foot per minute very steady descent at a high bank angle that won't put too much stress on the plane. Another trick that you can use in the game is the GPS. So if you look at the multifunction display on the right of my dash there, you can see that I'm turning around the runway threshold. You can use that as a backup reference to know where you're at, but you definitely shouldn't use it as your primary reference. Always use the external view to figure out if you should be turning more aggressively or less aggressively, and just use the GPS as a backup to have an idea if you're tracking how you think you are or if you need to make some more adjustments. It can be a little bit useful to see that top-down view. All right, so I am coming up on around 1,600 feet now. My airspeed is good. I think I'm going to need to do one more rotation to be able to get ready for landing, but I will slow my descent rate down just that wee little bit so that I don't get too low to the ground either. Uh, you really need to be keeping an eye on your airspeed and your altitude at all times and make a judgment call on if you're going to need to do one more rotation or if you think you can go for your landing from your current altitude. Another approach you could do is get into a forward slip, but I think combining the two is a little bit too much when you're just practicing the spiral landings. So now I am rolling out on my last spiral, and what I'm going to do now is start getting myself ready for landing. So I'm going to roll out on 150, I'm lowering the landing gear, and I'm extending my flaps to the landing configuration so that I have as much drag as possible so that I can come to a stop in as short of a distance on the runway as possible as well. And now all I'm going to do is do a very aggressive turn to align myself with the runway on an extremely compressed base turn where I'm really never even turning out onto base, I'm really turning straight onto final. And at this point, all I've got to do is align myself with the runway, keep an eye on my airspeed. As you heard, I almost stalled there. I got a little bit too slow than I should have. And then it's really just a matter of taking it down and lining yourself up. You can see why on your first occasions you might want to use a larger runway just because it's going to give you that little bit of extra flexibility in case you overshoot or undershoot the runway. You'll have a few thousand feet to play with, which is never a bad thing. All right, and that is how you do a spiral landing in the Diamond DA-62. Obviously, like I said earlier, you can do this in any other plane. And I hope you learned something useful in this video. If you did, please make sure to hit like and subscribe. If you have any comments or questions or you want to critique my flying technique, feel free to put a comment below. I would love to hear from you.